Hello guys, welcome once again to another tutorial session on Python programming for biologists. I release a video every Tuesday, so you should come by to watch these exciting videos. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to extract regions of a sequence using strange indexing and slicing. There are times where you want to access nucleotides or subsequences of a sequence rather than the entire sequence. And so to do that we use indexing for individual nucleotides and we use slicing for sub sequences. Individual nucleotides of a sequence can be assessed by calling the sequence and specifying the index in square brackets. So, for example, if you have a sequence that has been assigned to a variable by name DNA, then to access a particular nucleotide, we specify DNA and then we indicate the index as has been shown here. You should also note that indexing in Python begins from zero. And so, if you have a sequence, which will usually be in this format. Then the first nucleotide is going to have an index of 0. The second nucleotide will have an index of 1. And in that order up to the end of the sequence. So if let's say we have a sequence with a length of 100, then the maximum index that can be given is 99. And that will be for the last nucleotide. So, for example, if we want to get access to the fifth nucleotide, okay, then the index will be 4. Therefore, this will be the code that we will use to access it. And it's going to return to us the nucleotide C, because that is number 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let me show you how it's done on the terminal. So first, let's create our DNA. It's a string, so it should be placed in double quotes or single quotes, whichever one you prefer. Now let's start. Let's say DNA4, which is the fifth nucleotide. That will give us C. Let's say the first nucleotide. That will be 0. Okay, now let's try this. Great, so now we have this error message being displayed here. Okay, so what does this error mean? Python is telling us that the index is out of range. Of course, if you should check the length, it's 13. Okay, but because the indexing starts from zero, the last nucleotide or the last element will have an index of n minus 1, and that is. 12. And so that is why this error has been displayed. And so we can do to get the last one, or we can even do the what? To also get the last one. So this is how we do it for indexing. There are times where we also want to access from the end. That's the last element, end, from this side to this side. And so to do that, we use negative indexing. And that simply means we add the negative sign to um, the index value. With negative indexing, we start from 1. Okay, so 1 here, negative 1 here means the last element or the element when you start the query from the end from this side okay so we have negative one negative two up to this side and so to access the last element we get j 
when we use negative one. Okay, so this is how we can access the last element um, using negative indexing. If we have DNA dash two, then we are going to get T because when you start the counting from the end, this is number one, this is number two. Hence, T being returned. Let me show you how we do it on the terminal. We have our DNA already created. So let's assess the last element. We have for its gene. Let's do number two. That's two. Okay, so you can do this so far as it's in the range. Okay, so you can use the len to help you get an idea of um, the minimum and maximum range of values you can give. Okay, let's try this. So we are simply evaluating two results and to see if they are the same. True. So we are simply what's given this DNA dash one, which is what's the last element or the last nucleotide and DNA 12, which is also the last nucleotide if we are using the positive indexing. Okay. So because they are returning true because in the same region or the same nucleotide, the same position that they are all calling. Okay, and that is why we have this result being returned as true. Okay, so let's just confirm here. Great, so this is how we use negative indexing in Python. Let's move on to the next session. Now, instead of individual nucleotides, we might also want to get access to subsequences. Okay, mm -hmm. that means we want to extract portions of the sequences. Okay, and so to do that, we use slicing. And with slicing, we enter two indexes, M and then N, where M is a starting index and then N is the ending index. And this means that when we do this query, then Python is going to return all nucleotides that are in this region, starting from M, ending at just the position or the index before N. That is N minus one. You should also know that a copy is what is going to be returned. So your original sequence will not be modified in any way. Okay, so N minus one here, that will be um, the last sequence that will be returned. And so if you should have this query here, DNA 4, 8, then C8 is going to be returned because this is the starting index, which is 4. Ending is 8. Python will ignore this 8, but rather end at N minus 1, which is 7. Hence, C, A, T, T, which are occupying the, in the indexes of 4, 5, 6, and 7, respectively. Ain't that sweet? Yes, of course. So let's quickly try our hands on this. We start with And we have what C A T T. You can try with something else. Let's see. Zero to four. And that's A G C C. A G C C. Because we have zero, one, two, three. With this slicing, you could also do with negative indexing. So let's try with this example. Have A G C. Okay. Now let's do this. 
we want to check if these two um, queries will return the same results. And that's true. Though we are using negative indexing and here it's the positive indexing. They are all return the same result because in the same region that is being what's called AGC. Okay. So it depends on your approach, your questions, or how your, your, your study is designed, then you can choose to use this particular format negative indexing or positive indexing. It's all about preferences and how convenient it is at that particular point in time. But now you should also know that this particular slicing can also be used to generate codons. I'll discuss more on codons and how we use Python for it in a separate video. But this is the logic behind generating codons. Okay, so let's quickly just do one um, for you. You have zero, three. This is a codon because it's triplets. Okay, so with generating it, there's a series of iterations that goes on. Okay, so I'm just waiting your appetite for the video on codon generation. Okay, so this is how we do it for slicing. Now let's move on to the next session. Addition of a third index. Okay, third indexes can come in handy. Okay, so adding a third index means you are introducing a step or stride. And to do that, we use this format, M N S, where M is what the starting index, N is the ending index as usual, and then S becomes the step or stride. Okay, so let's look at an example here. We have 0, 8, 2. Okay, that is giving us a starting index of 0, an ending index of 8, and then 2 becomes a step. And so what it means is that Python will get to the start index 0, and then do a jump of 2, 1, 2, to the next index to extract that nucleotide, and then move on to the next, next until it gets to the end of the query, that's 8. But bear in mind here to the n minus 1 applies. Okay, and so n minus 1 will give us 7. But when you do the jump again, it goes to 9, which is not in that range. And hence, that one is omitted. And that is why we have a, c, c, c being returned when we do this query. Okay. So let me show you how we do it on the terminal for you to check it out. We have DNA. So we try with our first example, which is 0, 8, 2. And that will give us this. Okay. Let's try with another one. Say zero nine three. This time there is a stride of three. Okay, so we get ACT. Okay, so it looks at those individual nucleotides, I mean in respect of their indexes, and then picks each of them and then finally joins them together to give us that sub sequences. Okay, so this is how we do it for using the third index. You can try with a negative index which is still valid. Okay, let me just see. Four. And introduce the step. Okay. And we get this. Now, can we do with a negative step? Let's experiment and see. It returns what an empty screen because steps we use positive values, and so it gets Python confused when you use negative. Okay, so the steps you should always make sure you use a positive value.
this is for it for the adding the third index now let's move on to our last session and that is the use of a shorthand indexing by shorthand we mean omitting either the first or the last index or omitting both leaving only the colon in the square brackets so if you have this situation where you are omitting the first index then Python will start from the beginning of the sequence up to the points just before the ending index that's n this is how this particular um, format will be the second one is what where we omit the last index but rather we leave the starting index and so Python will start from the starting index up to the end of the sequence when we use this second format in the third format Python returns a copy of the entire sequence okay with the third format you could also use two of the colons okay that will also return an entire copy of the sequence let me do a demo for you to see on the terminal let's make sure we still have our geo objects in memory okay so we do we start with this n okay at the moment if we just specify just n you get error because we've not assigned any variable to n so we will stick with the numbers let's say this and so we start from the beginning here up to index number nine you could also do this with what? negative indexing let's see if yes so that also works for us okay now let's do the second example where we omit the last the ending index so we have let's say 10 that's ctg so it begins from index 10 up to the end of the sequence okay that's let's try with another one and get it done okay now let's do the third approach where we omit both starting and index starting and then ending index so we have this return the entire copy let's also try with this return the entire copy of the sequence okay so this is where i end my tutorials for today and i'll see you again in the next session so whilst you practice with this particular video i'll say to you Happy coding. Bye-bye.